Welcome back. This is part 11 of our platformer game. Uh, we're going to continue to work on character animation. This time around, we're going to work on the walking animation. In the last video, we set up the idle animation for our characters so that when we're standing still, we look like we are moving in place. Gives it a little bit more character. And this time around, we want to talk about the moving animation, the walking animation when we go side to side. So we're going to go back over to our player sprite into the animate method. All right, and we set our idle animation to run if we're not jumping and we're not walking. So now we want to set up what animation should play if we are walking, if self.walking is true. Okay, and so how do we know to set self.walking to true. Well, one thing we can do is we can just say if our x velocity is not equal to zero, then we must be moving. We haven't stopped moving. So walking should equal true. Otherwise, we can set it equal to false. Oops, not walk frames. Walking equals false. Okay, and then we can write the code to show the walk animation. All right, and this is going to be pretty similar to how we did the idle animation. So if we're walking, then we need to see if it's time to change frames yet, right? If it's been long enough since the last update, uh, to change frames. Now this is going to depend on how fast our character is moving, what our move speed is, and how many frames of animation we have, and all those kind of things. Um, we're going to put 200 here and see how that looks, and we can adjust it if we don't like uh, how it looks. And so we are updating, so we'll set the last update time to now, and we'll pick what our um, current frame should be. And that's actually going to be the same process we did here, except we're going to use the length of the walk frames. And we're going to do the same thing we did to set the bottom um, of the sprite to the right uh, location so that we can keep track of where the, the bottom of the frame is, because it might change size a little bit as we switch from frame to frame. And now before we set the image to the next frame, we need to pick whether we should go left, the left frame or the right frame, the right walking or the left direction walking. So we want to see which direction we're going. So if our velocity is greater than zero, our x velocity is greater than zero, then we're going to the right. So we can set the image to self.walkframes are current frame. Otherwise, we'll use the left frame. Okay, so that way we've chosen the right direction, and then we can set our um, get our new rect oops, image, get rect, and bottom equals bot. Okay, now let's see how that looks. So we'll go over to our main and we'll run our program. All right, we're idling like we're supposed to. Now if I walk to the right, there we go, we have a nice little walking animation. If I go to the left, okay. Now, do you guys see what's happening right here? I've stopped pressing the left arrow key. My velocity should be zero, but I'm still walking. Does, do you know why? Same thing happens if I go this way. So this is something that we didn't deal with before when we were doing the movement, uh, but we have to deal with now. And what's happening is, if we go back over to our sprite, when we move, right, friction is slowing us down, right, because friction is a negative direction. So our acceleration is getting smaller and smaller, and our velocity is getting smaller and smaller, but our velocity 
might not ever reach zero. What if it's 0 0.001, right? If it's very small, then our position isn't going to change because we're going to round, you know, we're rounding by the pixel when we move our position. So, so our position isn't changing, but it's not zero. And so to get our, um, to get our sprite to actually stop moving and zero out, we need to set a threshold. If the velocity gets below a certain point or before below a certain value, then it should just get set to zero. And we can easily do that by just putting here if if our x velocity, sorry, if our the absolute value of our x velocity, because it could be negative or positive, a very small number. So if our the absolute value of our x velocity is less than, let's just put 0.1, right? We're not going to move 0.1 of a pixel. Then then the x velocity should just get set to zero. So we'll force it to drop to zero if it gets too small. And what that will do is take care of that coasting problem. So if I run, when I stop running, I will stop as the friction makes me coast to a stop. Okay, so now our character has a lot more personality now. I can see him. Looks like he's moving. And if you've adjusted the walking speed um, or the friction, you might want to adjust the animation speed of that walking animation as well. If you go over to this value right here, this is how many milliseconds we're pausing in between each walk frame. So if you made that bigger, right, then it's going to look a little more like this. Maybe that looks a little bit too much like he's coasting, right? And if you set it too small, let's say we only had it at 100, then it's going to animate really fast, which might be fine if you had more frames of animation than two. But with two, that looks a little too fast. So I kind of like the 200 we had in there before. Um, but you can adjust that, get it to a value you like, you know, maybe not quite as slow as we had it, maybe a little bit faster, right? Until you find a value you like. Okay, one other thing that I wanted to look at before we wrap up this video is what happens when we are wrapping around the screen here. All right, when we go off one side and come onto the other. If we slow down and do it slowly, you can see that what happens is as soon as the rabbit gets halfway off the screen, it teleports over to the other side. And that's a little bit not quite perfect. It's okay when he's running, but if you go kind of slow, there is a little bit of a jump there. I'd like it to look more like he actually walks off one side and walks back on the other. Now, due to the way that High Game draws sprites, we can't draw half the sprite on one side and half the sprite on the other. At least not very easily. But what we can do is let him walk off and walk back on a little more cleanly. Okay, so what we want to do is go back over to our sprites update. All right, right here, we're detecting when the x position is greater than the width. That means we've gone off the right hand side. But remember, the x position that we're using is we're we're mapping that to the center of the sprite, the middle bottom. So that that's why the center of the sprite is what causes the teleporting to happen. But I'd really like to be able to walk a bit further. And what I'd like to do is actually walk um, halfway, half the size of the sprite. So self.rec.width over 2. And if I go that far off the screen, then I'm going to teleport back over to the other side, minus width over 2. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side in reverse. If we walk off the left-hand side, 
minus width over 2, then we're going to add plus width over 2 there. Okay, and you see the pattern. So if we go back over here to our main, we can see what that looks like. All right, so I'm going to go fast. It's okay. So now if I slow down a little bit, you can see I get all the way off, and then I start coming on there. So it's a much smoother transition. There's, there's no detectable teleport, and it looks more like he's walking off one side and coming back on the other. And that's going to be a little bit more clean. Now the one trade-off here is that it is possible to stop yourself so that where you're standing and there's only a sliver of your character showing on the screen, right? You can barely see him. Um, and so that's kind of a personal preference. That's up to you. Whether you like that effect or dislike that effect, is it going to um, is it going to allow the player to cheat and get away with something, or is it going to make the player get stuck and lost and not able to uh, keep track of where they are? Um, that's kind of optional. It kind of depends on what direction our gameplay goes. I think for right now, um, I'm happy with it that way, and um, and we can call that our video. We've made our walking animation and we're ready to move on to the next video. I'll see you then.